Hi friends. In 2014, I had the opportunity to film the iconic Dr. Tom Flanagan. Dr. Flanagan developed the Grouse Ridge Kennels in 1950. I interviewed Dr. Tom for the Grouse Guns and Dogs uh, two-part DVD that I made and I didn't include all of it in that DVD, so I want to share everything with you today. Dr. Flanagan's philosophy was that a good bird dog could be competitive in a pheasant trial, a grouse trial, a quail trial, on foot or on horseback, and be a good hunting dog. Grouse Ridge Kennel has a seven decade history of producing top-notch field trial and hunting dogs. One of those dogs, Grouse Ridge Will, is in the Bird Dog Hall of Fame. Here's a short interview with Dr. Tom at the age of 94. We have additional comments from his son, Peter Flanagan. Well, there's no question in my mind that field trials have improved the quality of the dogs. Uh, when I began uh, back in the early 50s, you'd go to a trial and there'd be two or three dogs for you to beat. You, uh, and there were certainly a, a large part of the entry that weren't qualified to be there. Now I think there's much better quality all the way through the entry. And that's a result of breeding and refining the, uh, the dog, uh, no question. When it came to training on birds, none of us had the luxury of working solely on wild birds. Luther Smith, who uh, l lived on our farm uh, and trained on these hills, is the last one I know who worked purely almost purely on wild birds. As he said, a f f field trial trainer needed just a good pair of boots and hit the hillside and just walk that dog to death and, on wild birds. Now, pigeons are a big help in getting started. It was a much more complex job training uh, years ago, it was not a one-man job. You really needed at least two to work the traps, reload, handle the dog. It was uh, uh, now it's uh, considerably easier with the retrap birds and that sort of thing. Well, I would say uh, trainability and. Uh, uh, and the dog uh, is recognizable early on, usually. The dog that wants to help you, that wants to please you, that isn't fighting you every minute, is the dog you want to work with and you'll get the most results from. A good grouse dog uh, is, is, I think, the peak performer in the dog world. I think it's the hardest bird to handle cleanly, and there aren't just that many dogs that are great at it. No, I've always been a believer you ought to be able to take a good grouse dog any place. That doesn't mean you can run them in an all-age championship on the prairies, although some of them would have fit the mold up there if they'd had the chance. Uh, I can think of a lot of dogs that would have done well on the all-age circuit. Uh, but they, they adapt. They have to adapt to the cover that they're in. And a good grouse dog does that. Well, <laughs> Will, Will uh, show, <clears throat> shows what I mean about adaptability in fitting the country. Uh, he won the, the uh, National Amateur Pheasant Championship twice. He, he won the Grand National Grouse Championship. 
he won a quail championship in Georgia with George Tracy, and a quail championship in North Carolina with that friend of uh, Joe Ray. Joe Ray. Uh, he won on different birds and with different handlers. You could take a guy out, take that Will out, hand him over to somebody who was a decent handler, and they'd win. Uh, a lot of Will's wins were trials I couldn't get to. <laughs> but uh, he was a perfect example, outstanding example. Uh, as to whether a grouse dog is going to be strictly a specialist, uh, that's never been our belief. Uh, we always felt that a good dog, uh, given the opportunity, ought to be able to hunt anywhere. Perhaps the perfect example for us was Grouse Ridge Will, who was the Grand National Grouse Champion, uh, was also the National Pheasant Champion, and also the Georgia Quail Champion. And these three different types of birds would uh, run and handle. He, as they used to say, he would find birds in the living room. Uh, but the multi-purpose dog is what we have tried to produce uh, from our breeding program. And, th and that's uh, seldom do you get a dog as good as Will, but often you get one that is very versatile and, and of course whether it's nose or whether it's this or that uh, there's a certain something as, as they say about class you know it when you see it um, as breeders we're not necessarily looking for uh, what a dog does when he's four or five years old we're looking for how quickly did he get there and how easy was it for him to uh, come to a high level, as it were. With today's hunters, uh, the average guys don't have the time to dedicate to their dog, so they need something with a strong pointing instinct and a strong desire to please uh, that's going to do a lot of the uh, work for them. I, I guess we've also always felt that uh, the good dog uh, is the easiest to train, and that, that's obvious, but not always acknowledged. Uh, some people are famous for having good dogs. Uh, you might say they were lucky if they were there to begin with. Uh, and you know, some trainers are, are noted for the dogs that uh, they won with, but uh, the definition of a good trainer is somebody that when you send them the dog, when he comes home, he's better than when he went. About one year after this interview, Dr. Tom passed away at age 95. I want to thank Lloyd Murray, who originally suggested that I interview Dr. Tom. And then I want to thank Dr. Tom's son, Peter, for setting it up, arranging a time and a place. Thank you very much. I hope to meet all of you in the field someday. Just a reminder, folks, to like us on Facebook. We've got a very active Facebook page. We do a lot of posting, so like us on Facebook. And don't forget to go to our website, birddogsafield.com. We have well over 100 articles on bird dog training, upland hunting, and 130 or so uh, videos on upland hunting and bird dog training. Birddogsafield.com. Thank you. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells, Mud River Dog Products, Peach Shoe Dryer, Thoroughgood Footwear, and Merkel Shotguns. <laughs>